What's over here? Just the Surface Pro X um, yeah. demo? Yeah, basically trying to showcase the modern day enterprise. Right. Uh, and if you go to a modern workplace, uh, it's very difficult to have uh, two dual displays. Here we are trying to showcase that how our first commercial HCX device or SKU of it can do two 4K displays at 60 FPS. It is doing uh, two 4K displays. Yeah. Two, okay. two of them 4K displays plus the native display at right. the same time. And try, uh, there is a video call going on over there with Shasha. This is live right now? Yeah, this is live. Now can I just um, drag some stuff? Yeah, it is smooth. Wow. Yeah. You can go here. Yeah. Nice. And you can basically use this as a collaboration tool. You are on Microsoft Teams call. While someone yes, sends you a 4K video, you can play a 4K video. And yeah. you're prepping up your slides for the Teams call. And by the way, you're browsing also while waiting for your turn to show up. Cool. So, um, cool. We have a plethora of enterprise apps already. All the VPNs are majorly supported. We have all antiviruses supported. We have all endpoint and threat detection enterprise softwares ready and supported. Okay. Um, so essentially, device management. There you go. You probably, are, you're not looking at the camera. You're looking at the other person's eyes. Right. Right. And so. Or you're looking at something else on your screen. That's. Yeah. You know. So your eyes are always towards like looking down. So. Any questions I can help you with? Uh, what are you showing here? Um, so this around. is Surface Pro X shipping hardware. Right. What we're showing on this is simply oh. looking up. Looking wow. Up. Why don't you give it a try? <laughs> Wait, what am I hitting? Space bar? Just the best space. What this is, is to find all the humans in the back. See, you're not even... That works really well. Yeah. And like, so, mm, just tilt your head. What's up? Oh. Alrighty. <laughs> and, and, and if you had glasses, that would also work. I like the way it moves even when one eye is closed. It's, <laughs> that's just very cool. Very cool. All right, what's this one over here? So what's this one? So we're working with Balkan Show. Uh, Super Pro the same frameworks that they have on Android and Qualcomm operating system. So uh, it uh, basically detects people. This is okay. Calls, so and it shows you a mask. That's and it. then, That's for instance, you can blur. Oh, I see. Okay. You see? Oh. Sometimes I'm not a person, though. I'm not. <laughs> what, was it? what did you press? I pressed this. Okay. All right. It's okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And um, this stuff works on the HCX or. Uh, it works on uh, SQ, SQ1, uh, custom enhanced chip built on the HCX platform. So yes. we have some additional features in that chip that's not. That's in the, the SQ1 HCX. and not in the HCX. Yeah. What, what, what features is that? It's not something we're going to disclose this time. You can ask Miguel if he'll tell you. It's a Qualcomm story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Sorry. What is the HC reference plot? The HC! Yes. All right. So, what are we expecting from this? So, the the 8C is going to bring all the capabilities that you've got with Snapdragon devices. So, you've got the thin fanless designs. You've got LTE, uh, wireless, you know, cellular connectivity options, all coming into more of a mainstream type of device. So, you know, kind of the, the expected use that you'd have for an 8C platform is uh, the, the home office one. Okay. So it's, it's good for like mainstream productivity. Right? Then yet we've got set up here. Okay, this is your home office. All right, I'm working with it at home, and now I got to go. Uh, kids have a soccer yeah. game at four thirty, and I got to be at the soccer game, and I can go because I've got LTE connected. Right. I've got the yeah, sure. Stick connected. Yeah, sure. Sure. Right. So, what what price points are you expecting these to sell at? Probably looking at about six hundred bucks. Yeah. Six hundred. Well, depends okay. on how it's configured. Well, uh, yeah, I understand. I mean, it's it's like what, what I what I kind of want to get looks like like a map of price points that we're looking at because I have a Galaxy Book S and the Surface Pro. I think both started nine ninety nine. I think they told me four ninety nine starting at the seven C. Now you're probably looking more in like even the, down to the four hundred dollar range for seven C. Right. So then you get into the, you okay know, with Windows. Yeah. So so then you're thinking like, did you say did you say five ninety nine or six? About, about six about six hundred bucks. Six hundred so, bucks. Okay. You know, it really depends. 
the clamshell probably six hundred bucks. Now with Snapdragon because you know we have such a, a uh, an integrated platform, the yeah. boards inside the systems are smaller. Right. So right. Now. The, the uh, also got much more efficiency, so I've got lower power consumption, which means it's a lot easier for me if I want to design, design a detachable like surface to, to do it with a snapshot. Yeah, because right? the the board's smaller, takes less space, the power consumption is, is lower, so it means that it's not going to generate as much heat. So if I want to put that behind the glass in a tablet type detachable, yeah, that's a lot easier to do than it is with a higher power consumption heating solution, right? So. You know, if, if you're in that detachable, because of the technology that's involved in that, it's probably going to push a little higher than your $600 price. But uh, for like a clamshell, 600 bucks, you should yeah. be able to get into an 8C. Absolutely. So when are these devices coming? First half of 2020. First half. And is that the same for the 7C? First half? Yep. Should, Very cool. Should the market first Very cool. Um, okay. I feel like I've heard that story before. <laughs> um, but... Oh, for me. <laughs> no, not 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 with this. I mean, not like the 8CX. I was here last year. The 8CX was the big thing, and they said 20, 2019. I think they might even said holiday season, and then now we don't have any. Sure, we do. Do we? Yeah. The, the Surface Pro X. Uh, no, Galaxy Book S is actually shipping. Is it shipping? Yeah, it's not not in North America, but they're. I was they're, not uh, no. Okay, okay not in North America. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, gotcha. It's, it's rolling out. I'm excited for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to get my hands on one of those. Those but, um, are really beautiful systems. Yeah, I they are. I keep seeing everybody using them. It's running here, though, right? That's right. So it's running here. It was running here last year, but I can't get it from the Microsoft Store today. Is what I'm saying. Um, I don't know. We got this one. I thought we actually downloaded this publicly. So I thought. Oh, then it might be the X86 version. No. No. <laughs> I mean, I have, to, I have to check. Last year, where we also had Chromium and Firefox running on these things, that wasn't publicly available yet. Yeah, we got the Canary Builder Edge on there, and that one is publicly available. That's awesome. Really it's really nice. I've I've used it on a Snapdragon 835 device, and it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually taking a very long time to load. Yeah. Well, that's you know, Chrome, Chrome and regular Edge work just fine. Yeah. This one, it is more responsive. When I, when I, the time that I've used. Oh, with the, with the um, uh, with Edge Chromium, with the, yeah. it's a million. Like, you know, it, it's not so much of a difference on a Surface Pro X because the emulated version is actually pretty good. Um, but using it on an 850, I had someone sitting next to me, and I was using an emulated Edge Chromium because Devin Bader still emulated, and and he was just he actually remarked at how slow it looked. Just looking over my shoulder for a moment. I'm like, oh, just watch this, and I loaded up Edge Canary, and it's like night and day. <laughs> Tilt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the performance here is not optimal. I have to say. Well, yeah. are you sure this is the ARM 64 one? Yeah. If you, no, no, not 100 percent anymore. <laughs> Can I use the mouse keyboard? I didn't load it all myself, so... Okay. Um, okay. This is... This is Edge... Canary Teams... WCC. What we've got open, it's handling it pretty well. So. Yeah. How much RAM is in this machine? Uh, should we go to check pretty quickly? Yes, we can. Yeah. That's probably That's what we expect to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, it's four. Yes. Well, that would certainly explain some of that. As it absolutely <laughs> would, yes. What do we get going over here? Um, um, this is an 8C reference platform. So this is the mid-range one? Right, this is, this is what you're looking at. Can you tell me what, what, what kind of cores it has? It's, it's 
Um, I guess the top core is 2.46 gigahertz. I think it's uh, Cryo 490. Um, but what what is Cryo 490 based on? Do you know? 490 in here? Yes. That doesn't say that. I'm quoting a spec sheet that I saw. Oh, it's running Windows 10 Enterprise. Cool. First time I've seen Windows 10 Enterprise on an ARM PC. Yeah, we have um, multiple different paths. Some are just to uh, effectively continue to bring more over for emulation or to run natively on right. ARM64. We also, if you get a chance to check out the WVD station, we'll continue to enable streaming of apps that, for example, if you're on a um, Windows 7 device and there are old legacy Windows 7 applications, you right. could potentially stream those by way of WVD. Cool. Yeah. And so the key thing is there's going to be a lot of different solutions for us to continue to bring yeah. apps onto this platform, but we are very much dedicated to doing that. And it, it would be a multi year journey. For people that want to use like Adobe Premiere Pro. For Adobe because, Premiere Pro, well, a couple of things. I don't endorse using Adobe Premiere Pro on a product like this, <laughs> but people complained about it when they reviewed the Surface Pro X. Sure. I didn't complain about sure. it. Sure. Well, for a 7C device, we don't think that's a no. normal consumer scenario. I don't think it's a normal consumer scenario for an 8CX device. Sure. I, you know, sure. it's. But, but we are working very, very closely with Adobe. Um, to bring them over to the ARM64 platform. Uh, okay. And in, in the meantime, WVD or remote desktop streaming, app streaming, we think will be a solution, a potential solution. Okay. It's really snappy yeah. performance. It is very snappy. It, um... Oh, you don't have Photoshop on here. The eight, the does this one maybe? No, for seven Nah. No. Okay, so this is really meant to be just more of that that uh, productivity on the go type of thing. How much? All right, so the, these things. What, what's the the price point expected to start at on on this? Uh, sub four hundred. Sub four hundred. Okay. Okay. So um, um, our aspiration is to get the. Uh, Sub 300, maybe even lower for education purposes. Yeah, of course. That's very cool. Specifically for education price matters. Um, I assume that, that LTE could be helpful in education as well. Huh? Well, if you think about emerging markets as an example, yeah. Uh, we know that the penetration of fixed line broadband in some emerging markets is not what we want to be. In fact, we have some stats, I forget the exact number, but it's something like 80% of students in emerging markets is never, their devices never touch the internet. Yeah. And we think actually mobile broadband penetration will outpace fixed line broadband in some markets, and that would be an area where we think 4G LTE connectivity is really going to help with learning goals. Nice. Um, this is pretty cool. This is this is really the the chipset that I was excited about from today's announcements. Yep. Just because because like like um at that price point there is no th there's no Correct. cellular connectivity right now. It's no um, sub four pounds. Well, I mean, there's probably some, but very few. Um, and then lights by. So this this is like, this is pretty cool to me. Yeah, what my friends from Broadcom um, tell me is they want to bring LTE at the cost of Wi-Fi. Yeah. So we think that's going to be particularly again for this market and for education specifically. We think that's going to be. Yeah. Really valuable. That is super cool.